Hey guys, this is Damon from the Tiny House Experts here at Trailer Made Custom Trailers in Olathe, Colorado. And today I'm going to show you uh, not very common, uh, but uh, an occasional issue that happens on triple axle and bigger trailers. So if you have three axles or four axles, this is more likely to happen to your vehicle out on the road, whether or not you have a house on top of it. Uh, so here, wheel number one and wheel number three going over a low spot in the road would leave wheel number two to kind of fall out of time with the other two axles. So what we're gonna do is first take this wheel off and we're gonna show you down in here in this spring equalizer, this is what that's called, there's this little yoke thing right here called an equalizer. And on either side of that, front and back here, these are called shackle straps. This is your mounting hardware. And as you guys know, we had a, a, a recent update to uh, service bulletins for everybody that's a tiny house uh, foundation owner to uh, put a little thread lock on the back side of these nuts because one of our vendors uh, supplied us with some nuts that uh, didn't perform properly. And uh, we had a, you know, a, a couple three trailers where this stuff backed out, this bolt came into the tire on the back side here and uh, caused some tire damage. So. Uh, we don't want that to happen to anybody else, so please refer to our other videos on our channel to make sure that you guys are aware of what that fix is and what it looks like when you crawl up underneath there. So uh, back to the issue that we're talking about today, when this axle falls out of time, what happens is this pivot point and this pivot point, let me zoom in a bit more there. So these two guys right here actually end up flip-flopping and now your spring is sitting down here and this equalizer eyelet is up here. And what that does is that'll pull this axle forward to close the gap between your tires. And you'll notice right away something looks funny because this tire and the tire that we've taken off here will look like they're almost rubbing or touching. That can go to the front or to the back and it can be one side or both sides at the same time. So we're gonna take this, uh, take this, this step by step through the process of first how to kind of identify what the problem is and then um, we'll come back and show you how to reverse that and uh, get you back on the road. So we'll be back in just a second uh, to get this thing kind of uh, in a precarious situation. So if you find yourself in this spot and out on the road, you'll know exactly what to look for. So we're back with the jack in hand and we are kind of creating the problem that you guys are gonna experience. You see this thing going up right now. And what's going to happen is it's trying to equalize this suspension across the three axles. And you see that one in the back is kind of doing some weird wonky stuff. Um, it's trying to go in kind of a strange direction. So we're going to maybe drop this jack down and put it on the other part of the equalizer south of it there. We'll try this again here in just a second. So what we're doing here, guys, is we're flipping that upside down to show you kind of what happens when this thing gets real wonky. It'll keep going on and over the rest of this arc until this kicks all the way up. It'll be touching the frame. Uh, it'll kind of look, if you can see in there, it'll look like that. It's almost touching the frame, but it's still in time, which means the, the spring, the spring right here is still sitting above the equalizer eyelet right down there. Thanks for the light. Um, and then this one is uh, just about leveled out and it might come back up and kind of look normal-ish, but it'll be stretched out this way. But this one, we're gonna take it all the rest of the way up and show you right here. Uh, now the spring is below. Let me move out of the light there, we got a little shadow. The spring is below the equalizer eyelet. So we're gonna lift this up and kind of show what it looks like on the roadside if this happens to you. If you've gone over a big curb or a speed bump or something, this doesn't tend to happen very often with the house uh, finished out and built a, on top of the foundation. Um, but when these are empty, if you're going at 60, 70 miles an hour and you hit a big chuck hole on the freeway, uh, this, this thing can go airborne and be three to six inches off the ground and you really won't even know it um, if it's uh, unweighted. So if your tiny house foundation still looks like this, uh, you don't want to end up like this, so do try your best to avoid uh, those obstacles on the road. But uh, we're going to lift this up into place, and uh, we'll be right back in just a second. Okay, guys, we're back, and what we're doing now with an empty trailer, we are using the stabilizer jacks to get the vehicle up off the ground. And what we've got here is 
we've already taken off uh, the bolts or the, um, excuse me, the, the lug nuts off of the lug studs to uh, reveal the, um, uh, the axle that's now been kind of flipped out of time. So if you look across the trailer, there's a nice even space between all three of those axles. It's a little funny right now because we're binding on that one over there. I'm going to zoom in and uh, ooh, show you that one. See, it looks kind of like a parallelogram. And this one looks like a really stretched out W. And then back up over here, well, this one's a mess. So this is pointing down. This one's in the right position where it's supposed to be. But this is what's happened. We've, we've replicated what goes down. If this, if this hub or this wheel ends up dropping down out of time with the others out on the road at a high rate of speed. And if you can see here, we've got the spring underneath this equalizer. And over here, we're back to where the spring is above the equalizer eyelet, okay? So we need to take this and flip it around to look like that guy. So that's what we're after. And um, we're gonna show you where we put the jack and kind of what the reverse steps are. And it's not a perfect process, uh, I'll be frank. Um, you're not likely to get this undone and, and, and the way you want it on the first go. You'll have to use a little elbow grease and a lot of perseverance, but uh, uh, a, a, a pry bar or a, a tire iron or something, uh, these are great tools to have when you're moving a house up and down a highway. Um, certainly um, a floor jack or a bottle jack at least. Um, if you guys don't know what those are, you're welcome to leave comments uh, or direct message us and uh, we can share with you what kind of tool kit we would recommend if your house is gonna be out on the road for any length of time and if it's gonna see some mileage. So because this is kind of one of those, um, in, in our world, we would call it one, at, one in a thousand uh, occurrence, that's enough for us to put out a little video to show you guys how to correct this. It, it happens on any type of uh, uh, linkage set up this way, on any type of trailer, uh, but more than anything, it has to do with whether it's got a load on it or not. And, you know, this stuff is, uh, you know, 80 or 90 pounds of sheet, so we wouldn't consider this loaded on a 28 or 30 foot long tiny house foundation that weighs, you know, probably three and a half to 4,000 pounds. So um, with, with, you know, maybe 2X the weight, so if the thing weighs six or seven or 8,000 pounds, um, the springs are going to be loaded and kind of pre-sprung a bit uh, with the weight of the house. They're going to squat into their suspension stroke and prevent that wheel from wanting to drop or uh, jump up out of time. So we're going to take just a second and set up where to put the jack and where to put a pry bar and uh, show you guys how to get this thing flipped back around to where it's supposed to be so you can get back on the road. Okay, so we've taken the opportunity to go from the back of the trailer and go up like kind of behind the last wheel. So to show you what's going on here, we've got a floor jack underneath the far back side of that equalizer eyelet right here. And remember, this one's already up in its place. And I told you before we took a quick break that uh, this isn't a perfect system. There's a little bit of trial and error here, so we're taking kind of a, a sophisticated wild guess to uh, assume that pressure up on this one is going to kind of flip this one back up into its place by pulling everything that direction and uh, get this one out level. And we may have to take a little pry bar here to help this one get back up to where it's supposed to go from this to this and make it look like the one there in front. So um, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and see if you want to lift the jack up, let's see if we're getting uh, the, the movement that we're after. If you guys can kind of watch this, what's happening is while he's lifting up on that, it's straightened out the one, which is a good sign. And if you got all the tools in the world, you could take, you know, two or three more floor jacks and, you know, put one here and put one here and all that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try, we've got, we've got good tension on this and uh, we got some movement. We kind of got the axle like sort of bottomed out in the suspension stroke here. And now what we need to do is get this to kind of kick over, get that to kick up, and this one to do the same thing, and then push up on that axle. So a uh, little bit of a, a kind of a maneuver here. The ideal scenario would be to go in right here with another jack and lift this guy right up out of the middle there. And um, sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. Sometimes you're gonna have to take a pry bar and persuade it a little bit 
sometimes it's going to be very cooperative um, after causing you all the heartache uh, to get to this point and take the tire off on the side of the road. So um, we're going to see if we can take maybe a pry bar or a floor jack. Come on in with a floor jack. Let's see if that'll get it. Now, this isn't your, your ideal scenario because most likely you guys and girls out there in tiny house land aren't going to have uh, multiple automotive floor jacks um, to see. Uh, we've got some movement here, but it, we're kind of going the wrong direction on that side. Let's see if we can get that one to flip over. So keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. Keep going. This one yeah, get, let a little bit of pressure off this jack on the end, and let's see if we can get this thing to, to spin up a bit more. We'll know here in just a second. Oh, it's going in the right direction. Um, until this one started screwing around with us. Let this one down now. We're going to have to go up front there, I think. So you guys can kind of see what we're, what we're attempting to do in one shot. And uh, full disclosure, once again, this is not a one-shot deal most of the time. Uh, so we're, we're giving you some, some insight. You might be fighting this thing for, for 15 or, or 20 minutes or more underneath it. Just uh, remember uh, patience and uh, your, your person loves you and uh, don't, don't give up. You'll get this. Um, we're going to take another swing at it and see if we can't get it to move. And then we'll come back and show you once we've got it uh, kind of staged for what it looks like when you got it right, now that we've shown you what it looks like when we get it wrong. We'll be back in just a second. So we're gonna take a pry bar and see if we can't get this thing to kind of move around a bit. Uh, in our, here we go, yeah, so this is going up. The spring is trying to flip up and over. And then I would, uh, yeah, keep that pry on, and then maybe, maybe lower that jack a bit. Let's see if that keeps us moving in the right direction. Guys, be careful when you're dealing with springs and suspension on vehicles because this bar right here that we're prying with that can turn into a weapon really fast, and the vehicle generally isn't going to tell you when it's going to strike. So uh, watch your, watch your pinch points. Make sure that thing doesn't smack you in the face. Now, if you'll take that jack and slide it up under that leaf spring, um, now come back, come right back towards the, the come back towards the end of the spring at the eyelet. This one right here. Yeah, we want to go right here. So let's try and put a little upward pressure on that. Oh, it's gonna come off. Yeah. Okay. Um, grab the U bolts underneath then. So now we're going up underneath where the uh, where the U bolts here are. You can see them going over the top of the axle beam. He's actually jacking underneath here this plate, and we're gonna see if we can get that at least get one of these over in the right direction. And then that makes the other one kind of fall in line behind it. So right now we're, we're, we're not quite to the halfway point. Keep going, Kevin. Go ahead. Let that one down now. And we're going to let the pressure off the rear jack, the one with the blue wheels. Oh, we're going the wrong way. Stop there. Come on up, Kevin. Now maybe take a pry bar. I don't think that's gonna work. <laughs> we'll try and pry that to get it more up and down if we can. Nah. Well, we're gonna take another swing at this and reposition jacks and we'll be back in another second. We'll see if we can't figure this guy out. Okay guys, we're back. I'm breathing heavy and we're all frustrated. So, we're back down on the ground. Um, we tried 
three or four different approaches. Uh, most of them you probably aren't going to be able to replicate out on the side of the road. So we got the wheels back down and the trailer is supporting its own weight on the tires uh, in the front and in the back. So we're going to try and see if we can't get this to uh, kind of flip itself into place now with the jack underneath the hub and maybe a little help from a pry bar. This one off first. jack off from underneath that hub with it down that way? Sitting on it. You see that other one real quick. Okay, back on the ground, using pry bars. One got tension, then the other one's flat. Out here, because you're underneath those lug studs. And then we're gonna lift up in the middle. And 16 minutes and 48 seconds in, we can Good. declare Good. victory Good. finally. Good. So now, back out. you can kind of see that we're picking that up to get it centered more in the middle of its stroke. So this is where you'll go back to your jacks at either end of the tiny house foundation and put your tire back on. But this is the victory lap. You guys can see here after 15 minutes of screwing around with it, we finally got it. So, um, just fast forward to this part, I guess, in the video to see how to do it right. But in this case, this is what it took. It's not always that way. Um, sometimes one floor jack and sometimes one pry bar is all you need. It's, uh, yeah, and it depends if one side, <laughs> both sides fall out or if it's just the one side. That's right. If, if, if you have both sides of fall out, as the guys say here, these, it's much these guys different. always see these problems. So, yeah, if it's um, just one side, it's usually, you can do it with just one jack with the pressure and it'll usually pop itself back up. When you have two sides, it's a fight. So there we go. If you guys have questions, comments, um, feel free to reach out to us and we'll do our very best to help you. Thanks for watching this how-to video from the Tiny House Experts. Take care.